Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 17 of Vlogmas and I'm filming a little earlier today, so yay. <laughs> Alright, uh, so I was going to do this video a couple of days ago and I got sidetracked because of the whole White House thing. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about um, charities um, and the charitable organizations that I've supported and the kind of charitable stuff that, that I generally get involved in. So I thought I would, uh, since it's the, the holidays and everything, people tend to be in a more charitable mood this time of year, so I figured it'd be a good topic for Vlogmas. Um, not that all of my topics have been Vlogmas good, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so I, I do like to do my part for charity as, as much as I uh, am capable of. And uh, like the other day I was wearing the um, sweatshirt that just came out from Misha Collins uh, where he's trying to put 91 homeless women and her and their children, single, single moms and their kids, um, into housing for the holidays, uh, it, just in his local um, town that he lives in. And he was selling these these t-shirts and sweatshirts and, and bracelets and a couple other things as a, as a means to raise money to, to help put these women into housing, uh, which I think is, you know, I think that's an uh, amazing thing. And, and um, I don't know if he met his goal or not. I, I haven't checked it. Just the, the campaign just ended like a day or two ago. But um, I think he got enough for most of um, the single moms. I don't know. But uh, it, I was happy to throw $35 uh, into the into the pot and get a sweatshirt and 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 do my part. Even though at the moment money is money for me is always tight this time of year, uh, and I haven't been getting a lot of work with my consulting um, agency and stuff. And I've been focusing more on writing. I'm kind of like I'm, I'm in a transition career-wise right now. I'm kind of in limbo um, between a few things. I'm kind of still waiting to see if I may or may not still get a uh, position at my local university. It's not looking like it's going to happen in spring, but maybe it'll happen later. I don't know. Um, I'm still working on my novels and, and trying to get those published. It, there's just all these different balls that I've got going on in the air, and, and nothing is really bringing me in a lot of income. Um, I have one active client still left with my... Um, uh, with my consulting and that's it and so on. That's the only source of income, but it hasn't been much. It hasn't been much, but you know, it's like, it's, I, I can't ask them to give me more work. I can only, they can only just give me the work that they need me for and that's it. And I'm not gonna, you know, um, so, but regardless, I still said, you know, screw it. I'm still going to go ahead and get the, get the sweatshirt and support the cause because homelessness is actually my number one personal fear. It's not a phobia, like like I, I, I have a phobia for needles and bees and stuff, but my personal fear for ever since I was a small child has been to become homeless. Um, it's not uh, a worry for me right now because I have a house, the market is paid off, you know, I, I have my husband to thank for all that. So I, I don't see myself getting kicked out on the street anytime soon, unless I can't pay my property taxes, in which case, um, but that's, that's not a concern. But it has always been a fear of mine uh, until recently. Growing up um, as, impoverished, as impoverished as my family was, we were on the, the, the verge of homelessness almost every month. And, and there were some months it's like, gee, do we pay the rent or do we eat? <laughs> <laughs> it literally came down to that um, on a number of occasions. And I do remember going to bed with no dinner because there literally was no food in the house. Um, you know, I would I would sneak spoonfuls of coffee mate that we had because I was so hungry and I needed something. <laughs> Dry coffee mate, yum. <laughs> so I, so homelessness is definitely a cause that I like to support. Um, another cause um, that is very near and dear to my heart, um, has been for a long time, but is even more so now, uh, would be suicide prevention. Um, I have uh, donated generously to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. 10% um, of my husband's estate went to uh, to that cause, and I have been uh, on the committee. I've, I I was doing just participating in the walks, in the in the Denver walk for their Out of Darkness walks. But then I was like, well, why don't we 
get a, a regional one uh, where I live up in northern Colorado. And I was actually gonna go ahead and start it when I found out that two other ladies had already started it last year. And so I was like, hey, can I help out? So I joined their committee and I kind of, I did, I did what I could. I, I managed to secure a few sponsors and helped out with a couple of website things. And then on the day of the walk, I helped with setup and cleanup and that kind of thing. So I did as much volunteer work as I could to support it. And we actually had a better turnout. Uh, we had twice as many people donate and turn out. Um, and we ended up with twice as many donations as we expected. So, um, and, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think we had a goal of somewhere around 7,000 and we ended up uh, earning like 15,000 um, for, for, for that walk. And, and for a small regional walk like ours, that's actually pretty good, especially for, the f for a first time walk. Um, oh, and I managed to secure um, a speaker for our, our, our event as well. I just happened to have a close friend of mine who is a former radio DJ and she also did the um, uh, officiating at my husband's memorial. Um, I asked her because she's kind of has experience. She, she officiates at weddings and funerals, funerals quite often. And so um, I had asked her to do that and she did a, an amazing job by the way. But I managed to, uh, I said, hey, would you mind coming and, and, and being a speaker at this? And she also has family members in her past um, that she lost to suicide. You know, I lost my husband and when I was 15, my mom attempted. Um, I actually got to see the, I didn't see her actually doing it, but, but I got to see the aftermath of her slitting her wrists and yeah, that kind of sticks with you. Um, that was probably one of the most traumatic things of my teenage years was, was dealing with that and, 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 and all the, the fallout from that and everything else. But, uh, my mom was in a really bad place, uh, at, at that point and, uh, thankfully things actually got better for her after that. Um, for the next 10 years, things actually started improving quite a bit after that, which was, you know, we actually had 10 good years where, where things were good, but that was, that was definitely one of the lowest points. And so I've had attempted suicide, suicide, depression, all of that stuff in my, in, in my background, in my history. Um, and I personally have never, um, suffered from that type of depression or suicidal thoughts and that kind of thing. Have I been depressed? Yes, I've had situational depression um, definitely uh, after my grandmother passed. Um, that hit me harder than I expected and I really suppressed it. I didn't grieve and I ended up in therapy for a year <laughs> because of that. And I did go to therapy and it did help and I got past it. And that experience helped me cope better when I lost my husband. So, um, so I was it, like all of the things I learned when I lost my grandmother, I, it, it helped me apply that to when I lost my husband. And in the last two years, I was like, you know, like when, if I'm in public, I don't. If, if something hits me, I, I do try to suppress it just because I don't want to be a bawling mess out in public all the time. That's just embarrassing. But when I'm at home and if it hits me, you know what? I let it go. I just, I, I open up, I, I let myself cry. I let the dogs come and, and, and check on me and comfort me and and uh, and they're very sweet and, and everything. And, you know, and then it passes and then I'm fine. You know, I just, it, you just gotta learn to let it out sometimes. And so that's my only experience with depression is, you know, I, I work through it and then I'm fine. I don't have this lifelong clinical depression that generally just isn't curable. Um, you can take pills, you can take medication, and it can help, and it does help for, for a lot of people. It helped my husband for 15 years, but for him, something changed. The medication stopped working. They tried changing his medication, nothing worked. All the pills stopped working all of a sudden. And I think that's when he finally gave up. And you know, it, it, it still hurts my heart to this day to know that he must have been suffering, you know, how, how much he must have been suffering. I mean, I can't necessarily relate 
to that kind of suffering because it's one of those things like I know when I'm hurting emotionally that I, I know for me it will go away eventually, that, that I will work through it, I'll get past it, I'll be fine. But when you're in a situation where it's lifelong clinical depression and you don't know, you, or you do, you, you do know that it won't ever go away. It might get better, it might come in waves and, and get worse and better and that kind of thing, but it'll never be completely gone. And I know that's something that he talked to me about a lot and, and one of his frustrations. And um, so I like, on one hand, I'm really mad at him, but on the other hand, I'm like, okay, but he's not suffering anymore. So it's, it's all that and leading to that. So American Foundation for Suicide Prevention has been um, a, a specific charity of mine that, that I've been supporting quite a bit. But um, I also have on the side been supporting um, it's Always Keep Fighting is, I believe, the name of the charity that Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles uh, generally support. And in fact, you know, this is the, the, um, the uh, SPN or Supernatural Family um, sweatshirt that they sold uh, for the holidays last year. And you, you bought the sweatshirt and it went, uh, the money again went towards um, their charity to help and I believe with Always Keep Fighting, uh, they provide a lot of resources for people who's, who are suffering depression, um, counseling, and, and, and those types of resources that, that people need, where the American uh, Foundation for Suicide Prevention, what their focus is more on is on research. Uh, research in finding a way to um, reduce or end suicide entirely uh, whether or not we can, you know, like trying to figure out where, what it is in the brain that's causing the clinical depression and seeing if we can't find a way of curing it um, is, is one of their goals. Um, at the very least, they want to try and reduce uh, suicide. I think their, their goal is like 25% by 2025 or something like that. I, I forget the exact numbers and, and I, I apologize if I'm getting that wrong, but they definitely have a uh, a, a goal of reducing the incidences of suicide, um, and and I, I you know anything we can do to to do research to understand how our brains work and and how depression works in our brains, the the more we can understand it, the the um, better chance we have of treating it and fixing it. And that was actually, uh, my husband actually specifically had this in his will, where he said, um, I want 10% of my estate to go to suicide prevention charity, specifically focused on research. That was his thing, was that there wasn't enough research out there, we didn't understand our brains enough, we need to do more scientific research on brains, so that we can understand it and treat it better. So that's one of the reasons why I have um, done a lot more work with American Foundation for Suicide Prevention rather than Always Keep Fighting, although I think both are um, really worthy charities to support. And, and obviously I, I am more than happy to support either one. Um, besides the volunteering I'm doing for AFSP and you know just buying stuff and donating things, um, like I said, 10% of my husband's estate went to AFSB. But then I also do things like with Gold Goodwill. Um, I, I donate, like I go through, I, I go through my closets every couple of years and it's, it's always like one pile is keep, one pile is Goodwill, and one pile is toss out. Um, I don't give to Goodwill anything that's got holes in it or is just, you know, falling apart, that kind of thing. So if, if it's gotten to the point where it needs to be turned into rags, then <laughs> bye bye. But, you know, clothes go in and out of fashion, my weight changes and clothes don't fit anymore. And um, sometimes it's like something that I really thought was cute and I wore it for six months and then I'm like, okay, haven't worn this in five years. Okay, let's get rid of it. <laughs> So, so I'm happy to, 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 to donate and, and hopefully help, help others out because, you know, growing up poor, we, um, we didn't have a Goodwill in our neighborhood when we were growing up, but we had a lot of secondhand thrift shops and things. So 
Um, if I wasn't wearing something that was a, a donation from our local church, then uh, we would pro we would buy clothes for me, especially uh, especially for me because I was you know a growing child, and so I was always out growing my clothes. But we would end up buying a lot of clothes at thrift shops for me, and so um, I I know that it helped my family out to to have secondhand thrift shops. Uh, thrift shops available uh, in order to, uh, to to make sure that I had clothing um, and co coats in the wintertime and shoes and little boots and things and just all, all the things that a child needs growing up. And um, and so I uh, I try and further that along by, by helping others out. By, like, okay, I have money to buy new things now and I don't always use them or I stop using them and so I'm like, if they're in good condition, let me go ahead and donate those so that someone else can get use out of them and enjoy them and things. So, so that's another thing that I do. One charity uh, I do want to mention that I no longer support and I refuse to support is um, Salvation Army. Now, you would think that, yeah, because I'm an atheist, yeah, I'm not going to support them. And I, I used to. I used to always put like a buck or something in there when they're ringing their bells and, at the grocery stores and things. And I used to always throw some money in there. But it, when it came to light how much of the donations that they get are used to lobby for anti-LGBT legislation, that's when I stopped supporting them. I, the fact that they're actually spending money for lobbying efforts, I, it, no, that money's supposed to go to charity and help the poor. Um, it, that pisses me off. So obviously, I no longer support Salvation Army because of that. I mean, I didn't care that they were a religious organization. I didn't care that um, they, you know, had a, a, a Christian uh, mindset or that kind of thing. As long as they were helping people or at least as long as I thought they were helping people, then I was happy to donate money so that, you know, I was I was thinking like, you know, soup kitchens and and feeding homeless and hungry people and that kind of thing. I thought that's what they did, but I mean, they do that, but they also put a lot of money into lobbying efforts against um, LGBT people like lesbian gays, you know, people who are in the transgender umbrella like me, hi. Um, and I'm sorry, you're not gonna get my money anymore. <laughs> because that's just, you know, you know, it's wrong for people, for them to take people's donations that people are thinking are gonna go to help the poor and instead are going towards um, political lobbying. I think that's that's a really bad thing um, for, for that organization to do. And so um, I, I encourage everyone to stop supporting them. You know, unless of course you are anti-LGBT, then you know, whatever. <laughs> then I guess give them all your money, whatever. <sighs> all right, so anyway, that's a little bit about my background with, uh, with charities and a whole lot of other tangents that I threw in there for the mix because I can. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you for listening, and I'm not sure what I'm talking about yet tomorrow, but we'll figure it out. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>